Hi, my name's Henrietta McEwen and I work for CEO Sleepo. I am the Head of Partnerships. We're here tonight um, at Leeds Castle in Kent and this is our third year here. This is all about the business community coming together in Kent to raise money for Black Charity and the Amber Foundation, who work very hard to help and support the homeless of Kent. It's really important that we get corporates involved in this as corporate companies can make a change and they're leading from the top and showing by example what can be done to help the homeless. Right here is the 25th of March 2024. CEO Sleep Out, Leeds Castle, Kent. And we're doing this to raise awareness about homelessness in the UK. And I'm here with a lot of amazing people who have decided to sleep rough tonight. No sprinklers going off <laughs> that were three years ago when they went off in there. We have actually raised so far £22,496 already. I just really want to thank you all for being here. It's a big effort from everybody at Porchlight and Amber at CEO Sleep Night as well to get people coming here and sleeping out tonight. So give yourself a round of applause and enjoy it. outside um, I'm hoping it's going to work with a flash but we just want to get everybody together for one picture Porchlight has been going for 50 years helping homeless people and today we're not just looking after homeless people, we're also looking after people who are at risk of homelessness and the cost of living crisis is forever kind of impacting and exacerbating the issues that homeless people and people at risk of homelessness are facing. Across Kent we are helping hundreds and thousands of people who are at risk of becoming homeless, who are homeless and bringing them in from the cold, giving them somewhere for shelter, for safety and just giving them hope for the future that things will get better and everyone fundraising tonight is making a huge difference to make that happen. It's so important that everyone is taking part and we're just so incredibly grateful for everyone's support. Hi, my name is Adam Colthorpe. Uh, I'm from the charity Porchlight. And we're here at the CEO Sleep Out to raise awareness, uh, understanding and crucially fundraising to support those who are facing homelessness. That is a lot. Tonight we're sleeping rough, just for one night. But this is something that the people we support have to face every day. We know that poverty, health and housing injustice are all so interlinked. This is just an opportunity really to draw attention to that and to gain a small amount of understanding about what they face on a daily basis. In the morning, everyone will be going home and getting a vague understanding of what it's like to sleep rough for a night. Although we are in amazing surroundings, it will still make you think at four o'clock in the morning when you've not had very much sleep, how someone does actually survive on the street. The money then goes to Porchlight and to the Amber Foundation and we keep everybody up to date as to how those monies are being spent.
Okay, my name's Helen and I'm here today to take some photos for the um, Porchlight, uh, well it's not just Porchlight, it's CEO Sleep Out, um, but I volunteered to take some photos for Porchlight for them to use on their social media and just raise awareness of their, of their charity, so um, yeah, so that's, that's why I'm here, busy. <laughs> We're a bit different from other services. What we're about is creating a new life and a new opportunity uh, for our young people that live with us. We're a very small charity. We've got four locations geographically across the south of England, but under 80 members of staff across all four centres. We are very small. At each centre we have about 20 to 30 young people, just like Jo, um, who benefit from our services. They stay with us on average six to nine months, maximum is 12 months, and during that time we put them through um, a curriculum which helps them to gain work experience, qualifications, um, re build resilience, build confidence. Um, this is Joe's first time talking in front of a crowd of people, so he's a little bit nervous, but you're going to absolutely smash it. Um, Joe's going to tell us a bit about his li lived experience of homelessness. I'm Joseph Watford and I come, I come from Amber and I'm sleeping rough tonight with my manager and another resident. Um, I've got a story about the background of how, how I have been sleeping rough. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, never done this. This is my first time talking. Um, so in December, in December, I've got kicked out of my family's house, been sleeping rough for over two to three weeks. Um, I suffer with ADHD um, and I've got mental health issues. I've been sleeping rough, it's really affected me. I would get in chase by other people, I was getting woken up by people, um, I got chased with someone by a knife, um, to that point I couldn't hold back anymore. I wanted to end my life and my career over. The, what, the only two things are stopping me was my two kids. I've got a boy and a girl who is, fr who is three and seven, and that's the only thing that kept me going and pushing myself to the limit. I've called up, um, I've called up the council, explained my problems, explained everything. They told me to, sort, to try and sort out a form. Then I went, at that time I was going to work, I've spoken to my manager at work, he told, he put me down to the point he told me he didn't care, um, that no one ain't, isn't going to help me and he told me I'll be sleeping rough for the rest of my life. That's when my heart broke and that is again where I didn't want to live anymore. I kept pushing myself and pushing throughout, throughout the cold nights, didn't have nowhere to go, was sleeping up in the field, in the park, to the point I was going inside the hotels to just sit in the uh, canteen until I'm warm enough to go back outside. I've spoken to the council and I've spoken to my doctors due to I've got, I suffer with asthma. Um, going forward, I rang up the council, explained everything. Um, they, they called me back on the day and told me they have found somewhere called Amber. I've done my little research about Amber it took them a couple of days to do a set to, to do my assessment to see if I'd be allowed inside. And to the point I had a phone call back to saying that offered me a place. The tears and the emotional has got me because there's someone out there who helped me to guide me in the right place. And now I'm in Amber, been there since December. It at the start it was scary for me because this is all new to me. Again, with no family and not seeing my kids. My mental health is up and down and not having no one does affect me because they say family is important. Going, going forward, I appreciate Amber's support in guiding me in the right way. At the moment, right now, thanks to Amber, I'm on my plumbing course, level two and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be seeing my kids and doing my driving. Hopefully next year, I'll be on the right path to my family with me. That's it.
The main things that we've seen, or like a trend, I guess, is how how criminal gangs tend to just actually seek out vulnerable people. The more vulnerable they are, I know it sounds horrible, but the better it is in terms of them being exploited because they won't see themselves as victims. They might be in mental health decline, they might have physical injuries, they might have substance misuse, they might have immigration issues, language barriers, literally whatever their vulnerabilities are, are what our criminal gangs are looking to find, identify and basically flip it on its head to use it against them and it's something that we're trying to look at with our internal training to, when people are unpicking that with clients just making sure we're asking the right questions so that we can safeguard them appropriately and get them to see themselves as victims because sometimes they don't self-identify as that so that's something that we've been doing recently.